the conditions going to get any better? Fingers crossed. I mean, at the moment, the winds are coming in from the northwest, and that's what's causing all these problems at the moment. But hopefully, things will change by the time we get to the weekend. In fact, if we can just show you this graphic, you can see here you can, the airflow coming in from the southwest from Iceland, which is helping push the ash plumes into parts of the UK. But by the weekend, a change in weather pattern is expected, which means the upper wind should steer around to a southwesterly direction, and that will hopefully push the ash away, which will mean good news for us, not such good news for those people in Norway. They're going to cop it there, yeah. are they? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Thank you for that, Amanda. Well, uh, let's look at the time. It's coming up to 30 minutes past six. Do stay with us here on ITV Anglia. Uh Police in Norfolk have confirmed the body of a man found in a river is that of Derek Tempest, who's been missing for almost six months. The 30-year-old father of three from Great Yarmouth disappeared after a visit to a garage in the town. A few days later, the garage owners were found dead. His body was discovered at Burney Arms, a few miles downstream from Yarmouth. Malcolm Robertson reports. For months, they've searched for clues as to what might have happened to Derek Tempest. As time wore on, the prospects of a successful conclusion faded. A police diving team scouring the river in Great Yarmouth told its own story. But now the search is over, following a tragic discovery in the remote location of Burney Arms, downriver from Yarmouth. This is a well-known landmark on the broads, and on Friday, a member of the public on a boat discovered the body of a man floating in the river Yare. This afternoon, the police have confirmed that the body is that of Derek Tempest. Detectives have been attempting to unravel his disappearance and its link with the deaths of two men who ran a small backstreet garage. Derek Tempest was last seen on October the 28th when he told friends he was going to visit Hall's garage in Yarmouth. On November the 2nd, the bodies of Jim Hall and Andrew Ventham were found in a car at the garage having apparently committed suicide. Two days later, Derek Tempest's family appealed for information about his disappearance. On Friday the body of a man was discovered in the River Yare, a few miles from Yarmouth. Detectives are convinced Jim Hall and Andy Ventham were involved in Derek Tempest's death. They've been investigating why he went to the garage in the first place. I do believe we're dealing with a suspected murder investigation and I do believe that Mr Tempest came to um, serious harm, probably fatal injuries, when he visited the garage on the 28th of October. They think his body was driven away in this white van. Although they died almost six months ago, the funerals of Jim Hall and Andy Ventham still haven't taken place. For the family of Derek Tempest, today came confirmation of their worst fears. But despite a post-mortem, the cause of death still hasn't been established. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News. A 65-year-old woman has died following a house fire in Lowestoft. Fire crews were called to an address in Bishop's Walk at around 6 o'clock this morning. They discovered a woman unconscious in the property. She was pronounced dead a short time later. Police are treating the incident as unexplained, but there are not thought to be any suspicious circumstances. A father from Jaywick near Clacton has lost his licence after drink driving in a toy Barbie car. Paul Hutton, who's 40, was pulled over by police as he drove the children's electric car, which moves slower than a mobility scooter. Lorna Ramsey has this report. For the time being, Paul Hutton has to get around on this. He lost his licence after police caught him drunk and driving around Jaywick in this. I'm slightly embarrassed, I must admit. Um, slightly surprised that my licence was affected for driving a vehicle we don't need a licence to drive. Um, and I suppose, to some degree, happy that it seems to have brought laughter and joy and, ha and happiness in a, what can be quite a dark world at times. But the police and courts didn't see the funny side. A spokesman for Essex Police told us when initially stopped, Hutton was advised against continuing on in the toy car, but would not heed the advice. He was a danger to himself and others and was arrested. Police officers stopped Hutton here in Brooklyn and took him and his toy car to Clacton Police Station. At court, he admitted drink driving and was banned for three years because he's already been convicted of the same offence before. The police still have the toy car, but Hutton is hoping to get it back. He was doing the car up as part of a project with his son. Can you understand the dangers that it might have caused, though? Oh, yes, I can. I know I'm not angry or bitter at my punishment. Hutton insists he's learnt his lesson. 
In future, he promises the only person who will be getting into the toy car's driving seat is Barbie. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Jaywick. Quite right too. At least he's philosophical about it. Mm. Let's have some football, shall we?